In a few minutes, we're going to be speaking with UBI advocate Scott Santins. But first, there is an ugly, vicious rumor about Andrew Yang that has not started yet. But let me just put an end to it right now. I mean, so I guess I, I have to start it just in order to, you know, squash it like the crackpot conspiracy theory poppycock that it is. Here goes. Andrew Yang has been talking about UBI for years, but when it was clear his platform wasn't mainstream enough to go all the way, he suspended his presidential campaign. The Yang gang handled it with grace and aplomb and a little bit of booze and moved on. But almost immediately, a mysterious Asian virus is getting everyone talking about UBI. The timing mwah, is unfortunate. To be clear, I'm not saying Andrew Yang released this virus in order to force people to stay home and beg, beg for universal basic income. I'm not saying that. I'm saying strategically from a strictly game theory perspective, it would have been well played. But of course, no, he didn't do that. I'm just saying that would have been my strategy because I'm a vindictive son of a bitch. Andrew, great guy. Me, if I go down, we're all going down. Look, it's just a rumor or what the rumor would be if a less responsible, higher profile person was to push this idea on the public. It's, it's Alex Jones level conspiracy theory crazy. And I'm here to say Andrew Yang should have never been accused of this by me, even if it was to stop the rumor from taking hold in the media in the first place. Look, you get it. I like the guy. And he could have never done the things I would have counseled him to do. The fact remains, people's interest in UBI has skyrocketed since the shutdown. Some politicians and policymakers have said that this extraordinary moment requires a more extraordinary bailout. And one alternative idea that's been getting a lot of attention is UBI, or universal basic income. The coronavirus pandemic is making it even more imperative that we introduce a basic income as quickly as possible in every part of the world. Calling on the federal government to immediately begin a universal basic payment. Will the Prime Minister stand up today and give a commitment to provide people with the security of a universal basic income? So many people are starting to use the pandemic as an argument for UBI, and they're wrong. I mean, they're right, but you know, not just for the pandemic, which we all believe will be temporary. Sure, let's get an emergency UBI plan on the books for the next pandemic. But the reason to implement UBI and why it's even more urgent because of this shutdown is the same reason it's always been. Super smart robots. If you look at the backdrop, we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Missouri, and those communities have never recovered. Where if you look at the numbers, half of the workers left the workforce and never worked again, and then half of that group filed for disability. Now, what happened to the manufacturing workers is now going to happen to the truck drivers, retail workers, call centers, fast food workers, and on and on through the economy as we evolve and technology marginalizes the labor of more and more Americans. All the arguments about the exponential growth of artificial intelligence eradicating millions of jobs in the next decade are not slowed down by this pandemic. In fact, they're being sped up. It's almost like a super intelligent AI asked itself, What's the best way to trick humans into just giving me all their jobs without putting up a fight? I know, a virus! Because the AI knew everyone would be so scared to go to work and too busy talking about the virus, they would totally overlook the fact that robots are stepping in to pick up the slack. Everyone except for Andrew Yang. We were already seeing the Amazonification of our economy, the closing of brick and mortar retail, uh, education heading more and more online and now all of those trends have been revved up and what I've been saying Wolf is that we're experiencing 10 years worth of change in 10 weeks this pandemic has accelerated many of the trends that I've been concerned about for years uh, and it's highlighting the need to put money directly into people's hands. That's Andrew Yang on Ken Jong and Joel McHale's new podcast The Darkest Timeline. If you did a double take there and thought Joel McHale was me that's totally understandable. Joel and I have a lot in common we're both tall white guys, and the highlight of both our careers is playing Jeff Winger on Community. All of Abed's films are about us. What, what else is new? Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Hola. Jeff, 
Stop being so relaxed. We need to talk to you about We know you're living out of your car. Why on Lord's good earth are you living out of your car, boy? Uh, should I go get a runway full of ice cubes? Because you guys need to cool your jets. We saw you. Or do you have a twin? I don't understand anything. Those people look just like us. That's eerie. A lot of you commented that you saw me on Community, and it really gave me a sense of what it would feel like to be successful. Of course, he was the star and I was just in one episode, but I did have my first on-screen kiss. That's Jeff flocking lips with Annie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're a fool. There's more, but you have to buy the DVD box set. I could really use that one millionth of a cent. Or you could save some money and if you can keep a secret from NBC, go find it on my Patreon. We've gotten off track. The pandemic has gotten everyone thinking about UBI, but an emergency stimulus is not UBI. And the real question is how will this shutdown affect the speed of automation job loss? Because it was already happening fast, but now it might be in the knee of the curve. <laughs> Welcome to Knee the Curve, I'm Emmett Short. Don't get left in the past, hit subscribe to stay up to date on artificial intelligence's devious plan to keep you fat and happy. This video is sponsored by Skillshare and the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description get two free months of Skillshare Premium. Quarantine's not just about Tiger King. You could come out of this thing a total brainiac. And Skillshare is the closest thing to the matrix downloading of skills that we have right now. Can you fly that thing? Not yet. Let's go. Okay, you can't learn to fly a chopper on Skillshare, but you can learn tons of stuff about money, crowdfunding, the stock market, you can learn about artificial intelligence, and I even found a course on simulating and programming industrial robots. That's job security. He who controls the robots controls the world. Also, there's a community aspect. You can join groups based on the subjects you're interested in and get help, or just generally vibe with the people who are interested in the same stuff you are. If you guys wanna join my community, I post the script to each episode on my Discord server so you can actually see the jokes develop and pitch in as a writer. If you wanna see my interview with Scott Santins in its entirety, it's available over on Patreon. Other ways to support the show are PayPal, crypto, or buy us a billboard. Yeah, nobody talks about the buy us a billboard option. You could totally do that. No one's stopping you. Let's get into it. You've heard it before, but this pandemic is actually doing some good. I mean, it's at least making Bill Burr happy. I am so pro swine flu, it's, it's like ridiculous. I want it, we need a plague. I'm telling you, we need a plague. It's gotta happen, and don't be afraid. It's only gonna, it's only gonna kill the weak. You know, seriously, put on a sweater, take some vitamins, you're gonna be fine. But the pandemic is also causing many other beneficial side effects. Cleaner air, happier pets, zero visits with the in-laws, Elon Musk Twitter tantrums. That's just good Twitter. And I'm not saying that to rudely laugh at Elon's mental state. I genuinely appreciate what he has to say. And I think he makes some very valid points, but can we leave the stock price out of it, please? I know there are plenty other people besides me looking at their bank account these days going, well, at least I got that Tesla stock. I, like the rest of the country, am having enough coronavirus nightmares as it is. No more time to myself. Why is he always here? So I don't need any extra night terrors about Elon being replaced as CEO. Grimes, Grimes, Grimes. No, 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 it was a nightmare. Another benefit of coronavirus is the acceleration of viral vaccines and cures. Elon thinks so. Oh, oh look who he's responding to there. Yeah. <laughs> that was my first response from Elon on Twitter, and my reaction was randomly caught on camera. Uh, I think I was pretty chilled out about it. Blober. Oh. 
Oh, Elon Musk responded to my tweet. Look, I know those dance moves weren't anywhere near Elon Musk caliber. Hey, we can't all have it all. But it's time to get down to brass tacks. The coronavirus pandemic and shutdown hasn't been all good. No, in fact, there have been some downsides. Deaths. Yeah, I have to mention deaths because I'm not a heartless robot. Yet. Hopefully someday soon, but yeah, the death part sucks, but by the numbers, it's affecting a pretty small percentage of us. What's affecting every single person on the planet, though, is the loss of income. And we're getting through it by relying on tech. And I've mentioned in previous shows how technology doesn't slow down in a crisis. For technological advancement, the coronavirus is like getting a Super Mario Brothers mushroom. It's a power-up. It's kind of like the more people die of coronavirus, the faster Wi-Fi gets. Will it be enough for streaming 8K? Let's hope not. Scientists say 60% of the population could get this before herd immunity kicks in. That's 5 billion people. That's at a 1% mortality rate, 50 million dead fast internet. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. I mean, you really can't tell a difference after 8K anyway. If you haven't seen my last episode on tech predictions, it's linked on screen right now and in the description. But while the entire world is focused on crisis aid and stimulus bills, which are absolutely needed, the tendency has been to think of these as UBI, but they are not. The U in UBI stands for universal, and the way the U.S. has doled out aid, it's been anything but universal. For millions of Americans awaiting coronavirus cash, help is not on the way. Jennifer Irwin's son, Simon, is 21. He's nonverbal. Most adults who don't have income are eligible for a $1,200 stimulus check, but not Simon. Jennifer claims him on her taxes. That disqualifies him from getting a check. Parents get an extra $500 for their dependent children under 17. But Simon's an adult, so Jennifer won't get extra money either. There's no check for seniors who live with their adult children, if their children claim their aging parents as dependents. There's no check for immigrants who pay taxes but don't have a social security number. No check for college kids or even 17-year-olds, if their parents claim them on their taxes. Not only are stimulus payments not universal, they're temporary. And that's okay because a response to a crisis should last as long as the crisis. But what won't go away is the amount of progress that's going to be made on increasing automation in order to keep businesses alive during this time. ARC is an investment firm that focuses on disruptive innovation, and I get tons of information from these shows from ARC. They put out a podcast recently talking about how industries are adapting to coronavirus shutdown. Many types of new technologies are taking hold, and that's because in times like this, companies have to look for better, faster, cheaper, or potential solutions to the problems that they're having. Autonomous robots that roll, or drones, they're delivering food, groceries, and medical supplies as well. These companies are now able actually to test more than they otherwise would have. The conditions are a little bit safer. There aren't as many people on the road. And it's something that the customers of this are actually craving because it involves no human contact. People would probably much prefer that a robot's preparing their meal right now versus a person. That's 100% right. You know, robots don't sneeze. I think that's the new tagline <laughs> of the robot industry. Easy, Sam Chorus. You're going to put me out of a job. That's a great joke, and that's a great podcast. If you haven't been following ARC, their podcast is super informative and accessible to the average person. You should definitely listen to this one. I've linked it in the description. But I warn you, that was the only joke. Now, automation, the thing Andrew Yang and other pretty smart people are calling one of the biggest threats to our existence way back in February, has become even more threatening. If these people are right and the way to battle automation is through UBI and automation is ramping up, then we need to ramp up UBI yesterday. Remember when that huge earthquake hit Indonesia back in 2004 and everyone thought, wow, that was wild. We thought it was over. And then a tsunami crushed India and Australia. 
I always describe the tech revolution as an approaching tidal wave. There's a tsunami of change about to hit us and most people are too busy building sandcastles to notice. I was missing a key ingredient. Coronavirus is the 9.5 undersea earthquake causing automation, which is the tsunami about to hit us. On that scary ass note, let's bring our guest out. He's a driving force in UBI advocacy, a prolific writer, and now senior policy advisor to Mike Breuer in his run for Senate to get rid of Mitch McConnell. Scott Santins, welcome to Near the Curve. And you know, my bedroom. It's a great looking bedroom, love the set. Yeah, I don't know why Trevor's in his sweatshirt and other hosts are like in their hallway with their webcam when they have so much money and resources. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I I, um, I saw when you said that before and I was like, ah, I kind of feel like I need to wear like something nicer. I was like, ah, nah, no, screw it. <laughs> just, wear, just wear the shirt. No, no, that's about the level of respect this show deserves. Uh, besides, underneath here is all Cheetos and tears anyway. So at least you shaved. Uh, for some reason, I committed to this quarantine beard. Yeah, no, I can't stand them. Every time I, I start growing, it's like, uh... Yeah, I know, me too. I just, I think I wanted something to hate more than the coronavirus. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. I just wanted to give people a little background on you, and they may not know. Uh, you were a writer for Cracked. <laughs> I really enjoyed doing that. You know, it's just, it, it's fun to me to try to convey information to people, like, and make them laugh at the same time. I know the feeling, but now you're a full-time UBI advocate. I gotta say, I don't see a lot of job postings for that role. How did you land that gig? Yeah, no, I really uh, lucked out on that one. Uh, I did, yeah, I, I created my own gig. So uh, I was in the position where I felt like there needed to be like some kind of translator for these, you know, various articles and stuff that were coming out. It was all very academic, talking about basic income. It was all very academic, talking about automation. And I thought, well, you know, someone needs to like break this down and make it simpler. You know, basically what you're doing right now, you know, you've created your own job doing this in a, basically a video version and uh, of explaining kind of difficult, uh, complicated concepts to, to the masses. And it really is a job that requires you to have a basic income. How did you make that happen? I discovered Patreon like not long after it uh, started. And it, as soon as like this platform began, I was like, oh wait, this is like a really interesting way. It's like Kickstarter for people and it's, it's uh, monthly. And so, you know, I could, potentially utilize this to crowdfund a perpetual monthly basic income. So how did reaching that goal of having a basic income affect you? One of the big things I learned was just how little security I felt until I felt it. It was like, it was like one of those things where I knew the word security, I knew the definition of security, and you know I used it in sentences, but it wasn't until like actually I had it when I was like, oh, like, that's what security feels like. And I think a lot of people are in that position too. Okay, so did you ever think a pandemic would be the reason people would need UBI? Like that's this really is one of those things I, I, I never thought of. Um, here I was, I mean, I, I knew that pandemics were potential, but it's like, I didn't design any kind of policy around it, you know, cause here we are, I'm worried about automation being this slow moving disaster and same with climate change being a slow moving disaster. And both of those are huge. And sure, it's, there's the potential for a pandemic, um, but I never considered like shutting down the entire economies in order to, uh, to actually fight that pandemic. So this episode is about how companies are automating more as a response to this crisis. Uh, vicarious robots uh, sales are way up. There's a call center AI called uh, Live Persons and there's sales are way up. There have been tons of uh, robot sightings of drones delivering uh, groceries. What are your thoughts on how much this pandemic is accelerating automation? There's a lot more investment in, in automation going on because yeah, they, they don't get sick and so much more production could be possible right now if these robots had already been in place. And so, you know, it would be it just, it's irresponsible as, as someone um, as an employer, as a someone who's producing something, to if you're if you have workers doing something that robots can do, and you're not investing in that, then yeah, that's irresponsible. You actually absolutely need to get out there and and do that. And there's no better time to do that 
than right now. Yeah, and if automation is accelerating, then obviously that accelerates the need for UBI. Like one way to think about it, like with uh, self-driving trucks, is um, you can think of it as as if we without basic income, it's like oh my god, self-driving trucks are here. With basic income, you're like, oh my God, self-driving <laughs> yeah, trucks. Are right. It changes our entire outlook. UBI helps us think about automation as a positive instead of a negative. Like if we actually say index a basic income floor to rise with productivity, then that means we're every time we like automate another job, then it raises our basic income. So like now instead of say, being mad at like uh, some engineer for yeah. creating a line of code to automate something, you'd be like, hey, yeah. make more of that code. Exactly, we love it. So do you think this is the perfect storm for getting UBI uh, passed for good? If there was any one more thing that could happen to make this even a more perfect storm, it would maybe if like uh, robots uh, gain sentience, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to me that money is being allocated through all these small business loans and unemployment, forcing people to jump through hoops in order to get it. Uh, why do you think that there hasn't been a universal payment? Yeah, I, I would say too that they just showed themselves as being non-essential workers by deciding to <laughs> not come back to work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, it's weird. We set up a whole thing where we said, okay, stay at home. Uh, we're going to beat this virus if you stay at home. And we did not provide the capability for people to stay at home. And so there's just millions of people out there who they lost their incomes and, you know, they're not getting unemployment insurance. They, they got one paycheck of the stimulus check, maybe. And now they're like, starting to organize and, and get pissed off and, and demand that they get back to work. Okay, so what if you're so good at your job that we all get UBI and you've worked yourself out of a job? What does a post-UBI world look like for Scott Santons? It's, uh, it's nice to think about that world to start. Um, in the kind of, let's say, utopian scenario where the base income that's implemented is like what I consider to be perfect, and like things are all set and let's say same thing is like all over the world. So there's not even any reason for me to help like other countries get basic incomes. Then I think that I would prefer to be able to like focus on more like science fiction kind of stuff. That's a lot of writing that, that I would really enjoy doing. I would, I've written like a couple screenplays just for fun that are science fiction. I would love to be able to get back to that and, and write more of that. Because uh, that's just something that I just really enjoy too. Awesome. So if people want to learn more about your work and UBI, uh, where should they go? You go to my blog at scottsantons.com. And I actually have a UBI FAQ there that I really recommend people bookmark and share with other people who have questions about it. And you can also go in there and, and utilize those links in conversations with others who you know, often ask the same questions over and over and over. One more thing too, just suggest that people go to bailoutthepeople.com. Uh, where that's a campaign to like get people to contact their representatives. Uh, the best thing you can do is, is, is actually dial them up on the phone and talk to them. And the second best thing is to, to write them letters. And um, uh, those are, that helps you do both of those things. All right, Scott, it was great talking with you and good luck with your efforts on UBI and with Mike Breuer's campaign for Senate. Good luck to you too. It was uh, good talking to you. Check out the entire interview with Scott Santins, which is almost an hour long on my Patreon page. And there's a little secret in that video too. Let me know if you catch it. Huge thanks to the patrons funding the channel. You guys are awesome. And if you like tech news and jokes, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss one or even becoming a patron like these awesome people. Once again, Ryan Stout was a huge help in writing this episode. If you guys haven't, yet check out his stand-up it's linked in the description definitely leave a comment about what you think about this video ubi automation and i'll do my best to respond if you'd like to pitch in on episodes or just chat about futurism with other like-minded people join my discord chat room where i post view links to all my scripts so you can see how they develop and chat out me about about joke ideas Find me and the show on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, just click one of these videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.